to see. Here we go. So today's uh, class is on Facebook ads. Um, now, in order to get to this point, uh, you would have had to connect your Facebook uh, accounts. If you have not done that, we're going to circle back on that uh, at the end. But I want to I want to jump right into ad creation um, and where you go to create ads and and ultimately what happens with those leads that come in and, and all of that. Um, at the end, we can circle back on connecting those Facebook business accounts if you do not yet have that. Um, now, I am going to mute everybody, so if you need to come off of mute, um, feel free to either hold down the question, uh, the space bar. That will unmute you as long as you have it held down so that you can, you can ask me a question, or, um, you know, take yourself off mute. Just remember to put yourself back on. Uh, it is helpful if you raise your hand, uh, your digital hand, obviously, not your physical hand. I can't always see that because you are not all on the screen. But if you do raise your digital hand, it brings you to the top of my screen um, so that I can see and pay attention to you. All right. So with that in mind, let's dive in. So obviously for campaigns, we're going to go down to this megaphone. Now, if you don't know what I just did, I clicked on that KW up top and it opens up a list of what the names of these are. You don't have to do it uh, every time, but I find it useful when you're learning command just to learn what the icons are. And in this case, it's the megaphone. And I want you to think about the megaphone as yelling out to your clients, right? Yelling out to prospects. That's why it's a megaphone. So I'm going to click on the megaphone here, and it's going to bring me to uh, the command campaigns dashboard. Now, as you can see here, I do have some things connected already on the side. Uh, that, is why, um, that is why these uh, exist over here. Um, and that makes it really, really useful for uh, knowing what you have connected and what you don't have connected. Now, before we get into making a ad, I want you to notice this payment button up on the top right. If you do not yet have a credit card in there, you're going to want to click on that payment button and add a payment um, to your account. It is important because the ads will charge you as you, as you use them, um, same as Facebook would, right? So just make sure that you go in there and add a payment account. Um, otherwise, you're not going to be able to move forward. You can build a really great ad and you're going to get to the end and you're not going to be able to run it. Now, it will also ask you for a payment method then, but oftentimes when we hit that post campaign, we're usually at the end of our allotted time and you're in a rush. And if you don't do it right, then you have to circle back. So I would recommend starting here by putting the payment, uh, your payment button right in there. So then next to the payment button is the create campaign button. And regardless of what you're doing, whether it's paid ads, emails, direct mail, social posts, that is all in the create campaign. So we click on that and it's going to open up this. So what we are choosing today is social ads. Again, these are your other options, but today we're focused on social ads because that's how we get Facebook. Now, there are a lot of different ads you can run, um, whether it's advertising listings, which from my experience and from talking with other agents uh, who run these ads, those are the most effective ads. Um, we can talk about the type of listing ads to run, but ultimately running listing ads is, is the most effective. You could also run ads, for example, on attract buyers. You could run ads for first-time homebuyer seminars, right? And that could be an event too. Um, whatever it is, you have the option of choosing, um, choosing what comes up and what the ad ultimately is. Now, the only one that makes a significant difference on what you can do is this ad mul advertise multiple listings button. So every other one will let you run an ad but we'll only let you put one listing on the ad, right? Regardless of what it is or what it says, right? So, but if you click the advertise multiple listings button, it's going to give you an option to put multiple listings on there. So you might ask what the reason why you might do that. I don't know. I mean, maybe you just want to run ads with all your new listings. Maybe you want to run all your new listings and target it to your sphere of influence so they could see it all at once. I'm not sure of the reason, but if you do want to run them, that is the option and that's the only way you can do it. So I'm gonna click advertise listing and I'm gonna hey, call Joe. this test listing. Uh, who is that? 
It's me. Yes. It's your boy Robert. Uh, so what would the other be for? Like what? Um, what? Yeah, it really, it's just for your tracking. It doesn't oh. currently do anything on the back end. Oh, so okay. it would be for you to track uh, what it what it is. Um, I don't think it has any specific purpose other than that, at least not right now. Now I'm going to click Facebook. Um, typically I don't run more than one type at once, although you could, um, oftentimes Facebook and Instagram can be run together easily because they're both owned by Facebook, but Twitter, I would do completely separate. Now, I don't know anybody who runs Twitter ads, um, personally. Uh, so I don't often use that, but it is an option here. So I'm going to click that. Um, and I'm going to click. Hey, Joe, I'm sorry. Another question. Um, yeah, go ahead. If you have your Instagram link to your Facebook, do you still have to do it on both? Because you know, if, how if you have them linked. Yeah. If you want the ad to run in both places, you, you will have to click both. It's, but you still have to do both of them. All yeah. right. Yeah. Great question. Um, now I'm going to call this test listing. What I usually do just um, from my organization standpoint is I actually call it based on uh, the name of the campaign based on what it is I'm doing and what the objective is. So if it's an open house, I'll put open house one, two, three Main Street, right? Maybe it's that it went pending and I want to advertise that it went under agreement. So I'll call it pending one, two, three Main Street. I do this so that I get, I can be organized and see what type of ad it is. So I usually say what the objective is of the ad, as well as what the, if it's for a listing, what the uh, listing address is, just for organization's sake. And I'll, we'll circle back on, on where that shows up uh, after we finish running the ad. So now I'm gonna click create campaign, and this is gonna pull up our campaign editor. Now, the very first thing it will do is pull up the ability uh, to bring in a, a listing. Um, if, I don't know why for a lot of people it gets stuck here on this preview and crop image. So just click that X and it's gonna allow you to move on. Now remember, you are not required to put a listing in here. So if you wanted to run an ad without a listing, you can skip these steps. However, if you do wanna run a listing, an ad for a listing, what we would do is we would find it. Now, I don't currently have any listings. So if you're like me and you don't have listings and you borrow them from another agent, again, check with that agent. I always stress the importance of that. Um, click on all listings and now we can search for that listing. So I don't know, does anybody have a listing we can use as an example today? I just spoke to somebody in my other class. Try for Heron, I think it's street in Norwalk, H-E-R-O-N, -E it's Sylvia's listing. For Heron Court, perfect, thank yeah, you. Now yeah. we're not actually gonna run this ad, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it up so that you can see it pulling in, in the information. Now it's gonna do a couple of things. It's gonna bring in the first image. We will have the option to change that. And it's gonna bring in up to 250 of the characters from the MLS description. Now it's smart. It doesn't just stop mid sentence. It's gonna stop at the closest sentence to that 250 mark. So you see at 230 um, text characters, it recognized there was a period and then there was another sentence which went beyond that. So it was just gonna pull this in. Now I would recommend changing this ad copy a little bit, but that's up to you. I personally recommend when you launch a new listing to write ad copy specifically for things like the internet that might be a little more catching. So let's pretend this one went under agreement as we said. So um, maybe we could go, uh, you know, sold in uh, 15 days, right? But we have others. Now, what is this doing? This is, um, this is a, a headline. And if you look on the far uh, right, it, it puts it right here. What we're trying to do is we're trying to create a really great eye-catching part of the ad to encourage somebody to take action. Now it doesn't have to be sold in 15 days. And actually, if you're working with buyers that might, or if you're trying to find buyers, that might be discouraging for them, right? Because they're seeing stuff coming off the market. Maybe you look at it as it creates urgency. Um, whatever it is, 
just create ad copy there that is eye-catching. Now, the, in the description, what they recommend is some sort of call to action. If you look, it says, try this, you can be coming home to this. So that's a suggestion. If I don't like that suggestion, I can actually shuffle through them. So I shuffled, it says, schedule a private tour with me today. I could shuffle through and it says, whoopsies, you could be coming home to this, right? I guess there are just two for this one. If I like one of those suggestions, I click the use suggestion button and then it pops it right into the ad text. Now, if you notice, it gave me a green check mark right up here. Um, and that green check mark is, mark is telling me I have everything I need to move on from this section. That doesn't mean it's the best or that it's what you want. It just means that it will let the ad run at this point. So I could add in here, call me today, and then 203-529-4207. Uh, that's my phone number. Now, hey, Joe, I now, if you wanted to erase that, does it give you the option again? Yeah, you say like like if you erase it all, oh, all right, I see it. Yep. You suggest something, okay, perfect, yep. thank you. I can use this suggestion, I can delete it, right? I can edit any of these fields. I can even save the ad text and see how I can, I can actually click on this down arrow and go and edit it later. Now I'm not no. going to, but I have the option once I'm done. The check mark just means that I've cleared that section that you did it. All right. and I can move on. Now, uh, and is that only here. for descriptions or does it do it for headlines too? Or do you have to make that up? No, yourself? you need to make sure everything's in here. Okay, cool. Yeah, Thanks. you can edit any of this. Okay, perfect. Okay, next is add media. Maybe I don't like this photo and I wanna do a different one. So I can go in here, maybe I have a video, I can upload a video or I can just change the image. So I have the option to change the image, add more, which will actually create a carousel effect with a bunch of different ad, um, a bunch of different uh, pictures, or I could um, go in and change video. So I'm just gonna change this image. It brings up everything from the MLS. Maybe I really want an outside picture. Um, I think this one's great. So I click on that. Now I have to scroll down to the bottom. After I do that and click preview and crop image. And now um, I'm gonna actually pick wide or maybe I could do vertical, like you have all of these options, but I'm actually gonna pick wide because I think it looks better in the ad. I'm gonna adjust it, I'm gonna click save. And now as you can see over here, the ad preview is, is adjusted. Now, um, you will have to pull in your DBA logo. Now, if you don't have the Office DBA logo, uh, I can send you a link on that. It's actually available on KW Connect um, where you can download all of the Office's DBA logos. So. For Ridgefield, that's Keller Williams Realty. And for Stanford, that's Keller Williams Prestige Properties. And the reason why we use those logos is those are our actual, um, what we are allowed to market to as uh, um, uh, brokerages. Those are your actual brokerages you work under. Um, so you would click this, you would upload that DBA logo. Actually not gonna let you run the ad until you do that. You can choose whether it's positioned on the left or the right. So if you want it to look in a specific way, you could do that. And then include ownership statement. That's if uh, there's a required statement like um, each office is independently owned and operated or something like that. That usually is a legal thing um, that is required uh, state by state. Once you do that, you're gonna hit save ad media. See, it's not letting me save it because I don't have my DBA logo in there. So it's actually gonna give me an error um, and, and we'll move on from that for right now. I just wanted to show you that if you don't have something that's required, it's gonna reject it and give you this little warning icon. All right, next we're gonna to go to Facebook ad. This is now actually configuring the ad. So if your account is, is activated, you're gonna click on account, then you have to select the page. So I'm gonna click uh, McHugh Real Estate powered by KW. That's my, name, my main real estate marketing page that I run. Once you pick your page, you have a couple of options as far as how you wanna run the ad. The first is Facebook lead generation form, and the second is a site or landing page. Really, and, and the reality is, is even if you use the Facebook lead gen form, it requires you to have a follow-up URL, which will oftentimes be a site or landing page, right? It's something that they will be able to grab. Now, um, what is the difference between these two? Um, the difference is there is a form that will 
pop up when they click on the advertisement that will require them to enter in their contact information before they get the information you promised in the ad. Now, you can do that on the site and landing page if you are using a product that has that built in. But if you are not, then you're not gonna see leads from running these ads, right? You might see um, a lot of people look at it, but you're not gonna see leads, at least not leads that the system is telling you that you got them. You may see leads in the other system or, or in the places that you're, that you're using. So if you're paying an, a, another website provider, you would track the leads there. You could not track the leads in command. So for 99% of the people I teach, I would click use Facebook lead generation form, especially if you are trying to capture leads from these. Now, uh, call to action button, really learn more, sign up, apply now. 90% of the time you're gonna use learn more. Let's say you did a first time home buyer seminar, um, maybe sign up is the right thing. Um, apply now, uh, I think they have that in there if you run Keller Mortgage or mortgage ads, right? Sometimes people do that. Um, or for, for rental applications, stuff like that. So again, those are your options. Now your follow-up destination URL, you can choose a landing page uh, from, uh, that you've built in with the consumer section, or you can find one off of your website. So I'm going to go to my website, and I'm actually going to find for Heron Norwalk. I'm going to search for that. And it, it, it has not come up on this consumer site. Was that a pending one or was that a brand? Oh, nope, here it is. We grabbed it. Yeah, it was um, a brand new one, I think. Yeah, it took a second. So I'm going to click on this and I'm actually going to see the URL up top here. I'm going to copy this URL. I love doing this. I send them to this landing page. So now in the ad, I'm just going to paste this right here so that that's where they go once they fill out the, the lead uh, generation form, right? You could, again, you can send them anywhere. That's up to you. And, and that's all strategy. We can talk strategy. I could talk to that for hours. But for right now, this is a really good option if you want to grab something quick. Now, ad targeting. By default, it's going to be 20 miles around the city that you have uh, for that listing. Now, if you didn't pick a listing, it's not going to know where to go. And you're going to have to tell it where to go. So I'm gonna click use custom settings and I have a couple of options here. Now it says target a custom audience. Okay, so I pick Norwalk 20 miles. Now, maybe I don't want Norwalk. Maybe I know that a lot of people are moving from Manhattan or Stanford, right, to, to this area. So maybe I wanna target Stanford instead of Norwalk. So I'm gonna search uh, Stanford, and I'm going to do that. Now, I can't do less than 20 miles, so it's going to get some in Norwalk, but because I'm in Stanford, I'm probably also going to get New Rochelle and some places in, in New York, and those are the people who I'm driving the ad here. So again, if you know where your clients are, uh, if you know where your clients are coming from and moving here, that's who you would ultimately target, all right? Now, the other thing you can do is target your database. Um, and we'll get there in one second. I wanna show you this interest section. I personally never select an interest because I've seen more people narrow down who they're targeting so much that they don't get in front of anybody. I personally don't. You can add interests. What you can't do is add any interest that might violate fair housing. So you can't run an ad that, that then ends up violating um, like, oh, uh, you know, this is a great neighborhood for families. So you can't target families, but you could target maybe people interested in finance, right? That's not a fair housing thing. So again, I don't personally do it, but if you think that there is something that might draw the right person to your listing, you can try it. I, I just let Facebook do its thing. Now, what I could do alternatively is I could target the database instead of that. And what that is, is I can actually go in here and create a new audience and I can either target by tag or target by neighborhood. And so that depends on if they're in a neighborhood. Now, I've never seen neighborhood do been done effectively because um, the, uh, the next door neighborhoods are very small. So you'd have to put a lot of them. 
So I generally, what I personally do is I target, I tag my database based on um, where they're looking or what they're doing. So for example, if I get a lot of buyers who are interested in um, Norwalk, even if I don't, even if they haven't responded to me, I may tag them as that and retarget them here. Um, but I have a tag called Awesome Sauce. Um, so I actually, that's my sphere of influence. So I actually can target that sphere of influence. So if I want to target people in my database who already know and love me, I might do this. Now, as a word of, and then you hit create, it creates that audience. As a word of caution or as a, a best practice, if you're going to target your audience and they already know you, I might change it to use site or landing page, right? You're not trying to capture their information. You already have it. You're just trying to stay top of mind with them. So you're not going to see leads from targeting your database, but you're going to be top of mind with them. You're going to create mind share. So if you're looking for leads, I would click target a custom audience and then pick that and, and go there. So now I'm going to click save Facebook ad. And now, boop, a green check mark. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you this. I'm actually not going to show you guys this. This is a, a feature that's coming out soon where you can automatically launch smart plans when leads come into command. Um, that is not active yet. I'm demoing it. So just um, note that that is a feature that will be coming in my understanding fairly soon. I don't have a timeline for you yet on that yet, but it's a cool feature that will be coming out. Next is duration and budget. So you're gonna wanna go in and edit this. Um, and so depending on what you wanna do, the minimum you, have, you can do is a dollar per day. Although I have not seen many people get great results with a dollar per day, um, but $30 for 10 days, that's $3 a day. I've been seeing people get pretty good results with that. What I would say is play red light, green light. Know what your monthly budget should be on this and, and budget that out. Don't spend more than that because it is very easy to overspend on internet leads because it is so cheap. So you think it's cheap, so you keep spending. Now, the flip side of that is, you convert internet leads at a one to 5%, depending on how good your follow-up is conversion, which means in order to get a closing or five closings, you're probably gonna need a hundred leads to come into your system. So again, play with that a little bit. Just know you have to get a lot of leads before you get results from these Facebook ads. That's just how it, how it is with Facebook lead generation. Now, once you've saved the ad in duration, now it's not gonna let me because I have this ad media problem and I have this lead setting not on, but this publish campaign button will, will actually light up. I'll be able to press it. And it's going to ask me, which credit card would you like to use? I confirm which credit card it wants me to use. And I publish the campaign. Okay. Can't do that now. So I'm going to save it as a draft. Click yes. And it's going to bring me out. Now, once you're here, I see I have a bunch of drafts. When you, this is that paid ad. If you look up at the top, you see this paid ad um, uh, tab up here. So if you then look at these, I have all of these listings that I have uh, done. So I have a two Sheridan to track buyers. I have a, this two Sheridan just listed. So if you look, I actually only spent um, uh, $23 on this. Um, and it cost me $1.67 per lead. Now, if I want to see the leads that came from that, I just click on this, this thing that says nine leads. It's going to open up this lead, um, this lead thing of all of these leads that came in. Now, what I can do here is I can tag them, right? So now I can follow up with them. And the other thing that I can do is I can actually see bulk action. I can add a tag or add to smart plan. And what I would do is I'd recommend doing both because when you add them to a smart plan, if the smart plan ends, it's not going to um, tell you that they were on that smart plan. Uh, so what I would do is I would tag them that you added them to the smart plan and add them to the smart plan. And then they're going to get internet lead follow-up from there, um, whatever that might be. So that's basically it. That's start to finish running a Facebook ad. So I want to take this time to open it up to any questions you have on the process. Hey, Joe, I yes. have a question about your tags. Yes. Is that where you met them? Is that how you're tagging them? Um, no. So for this, again, these are internet leads. 
So oh. these are leads on on um, these are leads on uh, that came in from an ad I ran on this listing. On this ad, oh okay, yeah, no, because so I said I'm... it was yeah. So I create lead tags for listing for advertisements. That way I can track where they came from. Um, so I say this is a lead from Two Sheridan Street, Danbury. That way I can track where where that's, else it uh, came from. Yeah, no, because that's where I'm having like my biggest problem, kind of like how to tag everybody. Cause you know, they overlap sometimes and like, I, I don't know what to tag them. And like, yeah, tags, tags are, are tricky. Um, what I would recommend is building a tag system that you know. And um, so you should have tags based on what type of person they are. Are they buyer seller? Um, that, I mean, that's an hour long conversation in and of itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I like the idea of always, so I picked this green color and I use this green color, this particular green, only for my lead tags. So I know oh. that when something comes in and it's this, I mark it with this green, that way when I look at my contacts, I can quickly say, oh, that's a lead because it's that green, right? Okay, so you're saying, oh, I use some colors. Okay, that's smart. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and my red tags, red is for real estate. So if they're an agent, a KW agent, somebody I want to recruit, those are all my red tags. My, okay. like, um sphere of influence tags are all the black tags right that's what those are so again i put everything under a specific color to better organize and then i will have different tag names but i can know if i quickly look at the color i'll at least know what that color represents because i've trained myself to do that perfect all right man thank you yeah because yeah like i said you know i already yeah. know like you know like i know how to do everything like the smart plan and everything but yeah well, and the like, cool thing about smart plans, and, and, and especially if you use these lead leads, is if you remember um, from our smart plan class, you can actually create tag triggers. So you can go in here and tell the smart plan or tell it when it's tagged with this, start this smart plan. So now all I have to do is add that tag, right? And it starts that smart plan. And I know all of my green tags like this are smart plan triggers. So that way I don't accidentally put somebody on it because then I know, oh, well, I don't want them to accidentally trigger because that's what that is, you know? Uh, all right, well. And that's just how I do it. You can do it any way you want. That's my system. Joe, so, you're going to have to do a class, you know, about that again? Because I know you taught it. Um, I don't know how to do it. But that sounds like it would be the best thing in the world. So uh, that yeah, automatically adds a them to the smart plan? If there, if a trigger, if a tag is added, yes, there's a way to do that. Yep. So if um, I tag somebody tenants and I put a trigger for tenants, every time I tag somebody tenants, it will automatically send them to the smart plan that I put in there. Exactly. And, oh, wow. They didn't know we yep. could do that. Yep. That I sounds... would be a little, I would narrow that down. I wouldn't be as generic as the tenants thing, but yes, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Like whatever you tag it is, ah, that's, that's game changing. That's yeah. almost as good as when I found out, you know, I don't have to search the smart MLS. I can pull it, you know, like, yeah, like a yeah. search itself, automatic search. I'm like, oh man, I'm doing work for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Next time, next week, if you can show us how to do that, that would be great. Uh, check this schedule. I smart plans are on the schedule. Um, I oh, have to look into what I have to remind myself what day it is, but right. um, yeah, that's all right. Actually, what's, what's this afternoon? Let me just check on what this uh, afternoon This was. afternoon was, I think, I had it up. Hold on. Let me see. I had it up. I had it up. Designs. Yeah. So, oh, so um, that's fine. Um, you could also, if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one, um, and we can go into smart plans directly. I still have one-on-ones open for this week. So feel free to do that. Oh, as well. Perfect. I, I will do that book one. Um, yeah, any yeah. other questions? We are over on time, so I'm going to end it shortly. Did anybody have any other questions that we could go over? I think that's it. Thanks, Joe. You're the man, yeah. sir. Like always. And that's I will set up a one-on-one, -on -one, man. All right? Awesome. I'm sorry, Stuart. Did you say something? I think he said thank you. Oh, okay. Cool. Excellent. Thank you guys. I'll be ending the meeting yeah, now. Yeah, um, so it was done for today, great. and maybe I'll see you at um, later at at two o'clock. I think. Yes, so, two p.m. Yeah. We'll see you then. All right. Cool. Thank you, everybody. I'll see everybody at two p.m.